Hello everyone, right, it's uh, Thursday, May the 27th, 2021, and I'm back up on the Beacon Batch for a retro vintage CB night on channel 36. So that kicks off at about uh, seven o'clock. I've come up fairly early, mainly to miss the traffic and uh, to make sure I get set up and everything's working well in advance. So uh, yes, uh, I always moan about the, uh, the sort of uh, initial steep climb of um, this hill. It's not that steep to be honest, but uh, if you're carrying a decent pack weight and you haven't been out for a while, it can uh, cause a little bit of breathlessness, should I say. But so uh, I'll show you that in a moment. And um, then I'll show you uh, one of the bunkers that uh, is still up here from when this place used to be a World War II decoy city, believe it or not. So I'll show you that in a moment. And um, yeah, anyway, this video, I don't know um, how this is gonna pan out actually. Uh, it's difficult with um, outdoor stuff. Uh, a lot of the time uh, you end up having to do a voiceover or the footage is no good because of wind noise or whatever. And it's a lot more difficult to record stuff than uh, if you were indoors in front of um, sort of fixed equipment, so to speak. So we'll see how it turns out. I think probably uh, I'll cover the net the sort of uh, contacts etc in a separate um, video but uh, this one will be sort of the journey and uh, the operational stroke setup side of things so uh, that's what I'll be doing okay I'll spin the camera around show you the kit bag and uh, I'll show you that um, at least from a distance that incline and that bunker okay there's the kit bag now I don't like failing to be honest I've got a bit of a thing and if I promise to be out, I'll try my very hardest to be out, even if, um, like I am today, walking with a bit of pain. And to be honest, I, I have been on hands and knees in the past to get to the top of some of these mountains in order to uh, make a promised net happen. Uh, this time it's not quite so bad. I used to carry anything up to 37 kilos worth of kit. Uh, this one's about 20 kilos. I'm, I'm sort of, uh, well, mainly because I'm on lithium based batteries these days, not uh, lead acid. I couldn't carry that sort of weight. Um, I doubt I'll ever be able to carry that sort of weight again with um, the way my knees are, but this one's about 20 kilos. And so I don't like failure. So I've actually got three radios with me just in case we get any troubles. And, um, we all know the T2LT etc is uh, tested good so hopefully no failures there anyway that uh, initial fairly steep climb there's easier ways up here but um, one of the main reasons I come out is because I like the track I don't want the track to be too easy so it's, uh, I say I don't uh, solely come out just to make radio contacts even if I made no radio contacts tonight I'll be uh, happy because uh, I'll be out in the fresh air and uh, enjoy myself anyway the gates collapsed since uh, the last been here but um, down over there it's probably about half a mile and it's loose rock on the top that's what makes it um, difficult so um, not too bad but it can come a little bit tight uh, going back down is worse for me because of the old knees i'll just walk around out to that uh, bunker and it's sad to see some of this world war ii stuff uh, being reclaimed and vandalized be re reclaimed by nature because it does tell a very important story But these would have been, I think there's four of them, I know of another one. These uh, probably would have housed generators, I guess, to uh, power this uh, decoy city ventilation shaft there. Apologies for any wind noise, I'm trying my best to shield you from it. So sort of anti sort of blast wall there, I guess. All locked up with a a metal gate 
because people do tend to uh, use it as a toilet and a place to take drugs and other things like that not far enough remote away from such people at the moment so yeah big concrete cap on the top but um, I say it would be a shame it's deteriorated um, in the last sort of 10 years since um, I've been coming up here so uh, hopefully um, it will be preserved and uh, say our recent history there's still people alive that remember that are old enough to have uh, been active in the Second World War so uh, there we go that's the Beacon Batch uh, decoy city generator building one of four I believe now over there there's quite a nice um, woods over there been round it once and it's uh, I did a quick recce around there the other day and it looks like a nice uh, part of the uh, the hill not quite a size to be batch itself but uh, I think when it gets really busy I may find myself uh, decanting over there anyway over that way you can see Brent Knoll and uh, out into the Bristol Channel I was going to go perhaps to the Quantox or Dunkery Beacon tonight but I didn't realise it's bank holiday weekend I know it's only a Thursday night but a lot of people take the extra day off and I so I didn't want to fail to get up onto this hill for this net or a hill for this net so I thought the last thing I want to happen is to get stuck in a massive traffic jam on the M5 and not make it up so uh, not the optimum position that I was hoping for but it's uh, hopefully a safe bet now uh, looking at the weather I was out last week doing a, a comms check with uh, Ben OP255 very windy hyper windy and raining so um, even then there's quite a few corners to the station so on a nice night like this uh, unless they've all gone on holiday I guess I might again have a lot of callers to the station asking me what I'm doing so uh, there we go I may have to uh, sort of brush them aside somewhat if the net is quite busy but we will see anyway I'm gonna trek on up through and uh, get set up nice and early enjoy some coffee and we'll take it from there As I head up further and further into these hills the uh, countryside resembles the normal English countryside less and less far fewer trees I guess due to the uh, high prevailing winds and the lack of soil depth particularly near the top and uh, you get a lot of uh, this sort of uh, scrubland type um, growth that can uh, actually catch fire quite easily so uh, if you do come to these places uh, avoid uh, open fires etc especially if it's been dry and it does really dry out quickly because it's windy it, it dries out really quickly and you know this resembles more like uh, a scene from uh, the USA or Africa maybe or whatever it's like a plane with uh, plenty of wild horses over there look and all the way up through too I wouldn't be surprised if I don't get a visit from those later on so uh, yes and over in the backdrop is some more normal looking uh, English countryside but uh, certainly as we've come up or I have it's only me come up into the more remote parts of uh, the higher part of the Mendip Hills it's looking all rather different anyway I'm gonna head up um, to the top now I've momentarily lost sight of the tree point no I am I can see it straight ahead so um, well this part of it is easy it's just to say that first bit is a little bit of a, a test on those loose rocks and a bit of an incline but the rest of it is uh, it's no problem at all 
even with uh, this 20 kg on of uh, kit weight. Right, I'm nearing the top now. I've just uh, rejoined the main sort of drag. I come up um, off to one side. That's the main drag. It's been resurfaced uh, for the most part in recent years. But you can see these um, humps that have been... I don't know if there's any brick in the middle of them or it's just an earthwork, but uh, they pepper the top of this hill. There's the trig point straight ahead. They pepper the top of this hill because uh, obviously they would have been much bigger when they were freshly built back in the war. But uh, the intention was uh, apparently that uh, if enemy aircraft were to land, it'd break the wings off of them. That's preventing them from uh, using this really as a, an impromptu airport in the uh, event of uh, an invasion. So there we go. Anyway, looking out there towards uh, Penarth, I think it is, sticking out in the sea. Just see the top of Steep Home. And I've been on there with the radio. There's Flat Home. I've been on there with the radio. And straight ahead there, you probably can't make it out on the camera. You can actually see it better from here than you can the top. It's Penavan, highest point in southern Britain, and it's Sister Peak, the slightly lower Corn D. And I've been up to there several times also. So, uh, yeah, certainly got me out and about. That looks like the original Seven Bridge over there. And I think I can see the top of the second Seven Crossing. I think it's called the Prince of Wales Bridge or something these days, I don't know. Anyway, there we go. So I haven't seen a soul yet, which is unusual for a nice day like this. So perhaps they've um, gone further afield, I do not know. But a lot of people um, head out after work, actually. So uh, no doubt there'll be uh, a few visitors to the station as the evening progresses. Right, let's get on up to that trick. And we'll take it from there. Okay, all set up and in position, almost. There's a trig point. Seen and heard it all before. 1,066 feet, 225 meters above sea level. So uh, I've actually got um, the uh, Midland 77 65 which is a 31-year-old CB2781. Bought it because it's slimline and old. And I've also got a backup uh, Moonraker Miner and the Delta Slim as well. Tested SWR just now and uh, it's absolutely fine, just what I would expect. And um, antenna is T2LT on the 6 meter roach pole, standing proud. Guy wire is slightly higher than normal because I had to remake the disc in the middle. The pole that I tried it out on appears to be slightly thinner diameter than this one so that disc has not slid down as much as I wanted it to. I like to guide these low and let the pole flex with the wind. Some people guide them high and they seem to get more breakages. I've never broken a, a pole apart from when I've um, either stood on it or shut it in the car door. Never had one break out in the field so to speak. Normally I would put that disc at that last joint there so uh, it's a couple of feet high at the moment it's a little bit windy up here but it's not too bad so there we go anyway um, on this occasion I've actually got the low pass filter at that point I'll show you what that um, other little box is briefly in a moment so uh, yeah I'm never one to take a chance the airport is just there we don't want anything uh, any harmonics especially with these old radios and you've got the Transmission towers there, not all that far away. A lot of people think it's all about um, prevention of TVI. So if your neighbours haven't complained that you're coming through their TV or whatever, then it's all good to go. Well, firstly, I would say to that, well, people don't tend to knock on your door anymore. They just uh, complain. And secondly, it's not really about TVI these days, certainly not out places like this. It's about suppression of harmonics which are little mirror images of your um, signal 
at regular intervals and some of these radios can be putting out a fair fair harmonic and the only way to really tell is to look on the spectrum analyzer or as I do sometimes look on the SDR but um, yeah I don't take the chance so I plop that in insertion loss is 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 dB at most so it goes in there anyway I'm gonna finish getting set up I'll take that SWR meter out of line it's six o'clock now and that is due to start at seven so uh, there we go that is the setup I've got um, got the flask there I'm not gonna set up a shelter tonight that's no need whatsoever it's a lovely evening and there we go let's see what uh, what we can do so uh, I'll probably show you a few snippets of uh, what's going on and then we'll see what comes in from everyone else and perhaps we'll do a, a compilation of some of the uh, signals we had. It's a little bit windy up here, so it may all get zeroed through uh, wind noise. We'll see how it goes, but uh, there we go. So I'm up here again. I think it's the fourth time I've been up here in recent weeks, so uh, it will be time soon to spread my wings a little bit further. I've been up to Crook Peak as well, but as yet, not over to uh, some of the bigger peaks over the water but that hopefully will be coming soon. So there we are, there's the old tree, there's still a bit of life left in it, but uh, it looks more and more ragged every year, a bit like me. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on. Yeah, just easy there, yeah, a Charlie Tango X-ray, 104 Gary, here there, Gary. Yeah, Roger, Roger, Ben, I copy, mate. Yeah, I got you, Gary, a little bit of noise coming through with you, but I've got you over. Yeah, not quite as good as the wind assisted job last week, but uh, you're making the trip radio five, mate, back to you. Yeah, Roger, Roger, I just think it's conditions. Well, I could give you a five by five, 55, but there is a little bit of noise uh, with it, over. 